Okay, so I've been asked to begin. Um, I'm going to focus on bearded iris. That's what most everyone's going to see and have questions on. This is a typical bearded iris growth pattern. The mother rhizome has sent up a bloom stalk and has also sent up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, over eight new side shoots. This is uh, this yellow one, reblooming iris. Um, 95, 99, whatever percent of the time, this rhizome, now that it's bloomed, will never bloom again. It supports the growth of the new side shoots. So eventually, all these leaves that are nice big leaves off to the side are just going to die back. And what you will be left with is... is a rhizome sitting there with just a stub at the end, which was the growth that bloomed uh, last year. And if you look, this is, since this was a re-bloomer, I know it's grown, potentially it's bloomed at least twice this year, or last year, whatever. And this was the mother. It bloomed, sent up two rhizome, two, three, and three little nubbies, sent up at least three new rhizomes. That one bloomed already. It's sent up two of its own. So this shows you the growth pattern of the bearded iris. If you imagine this after a year, where one, where one rhizome has made six, a year later, those six, if they're really, really happy, have made another six. What you'll end up with is a massive clump, like you see off to the side over here, where the iris have grown side by side, clumped on top of one another. You'll see that over there, really, really crowded in, and they will not bloom. They'll sit there and maybe they'll stay green and nice. But they're just going to sit there till they get enough growth on the new rhizome to support a bloom stock, and then they'll maybe divide and and continue the process. When you have these guys, else. When you have this going on in your yard, what do you do? You dig it up, you take your clump, pull it apart. Um, with bearded iris, it's really easy. Break them apart. This one you might plant as is, but each, each of these new little side offshoots has its own root structure. So you just break them off. And throw, throw away this. It's history. It's the mother clump. That was the mother. Oh. So from that from that one, I now have two. Just plant these in. Um, you don't have to worry about keeping them moist. They're very tolerant. Very tolerant. Um, so as you can see from this clump. I had, and these were in a pot. I keep them like this so I can do have them for demonstration purposes. So that's that's what you don't want. Uh, that's a straight. 
Um, generally what the hybridizers do when, okay, if you order iris from a hybridizer, generally what you'll receive is, and what we prepare for our sale this next week, is something that'll look like that. Um, the long, long roots, we usually keep some roots on it, so you have something to anchor the rhizome in your soil and keep it down in. Do you take that fan and put it right on the soil, or are you, how far down are you going? Oh. Okay. A, when you, on the bearded iris, okay, and, and every group, every species has a little different cultural requirements. The bearded iris, you need to plant them so that the rhizome is right this, if my hands the dirt, but the rhizome is right at the surface of the dirt, so it gets just a touch of sun. If you plant it deep down in, a couple inches down in, either it will sit there and rot, or it'll sit there and never bloom. It needs that little bit of sun on the rhizome to bloom successfully. So if over time dirt has started to cover the rhizome, I need to scrape it back. Root. Scrape the dirt back. Yes. Uh, the mother that you talked about coming out. Uh huh. Um, would it? It won't ever flower again. Right. But will it produce more pups? Uh, probably yeah. not. Okay. So it is totally useless. Yes. <laughs> right. And actually, I have to, I have to qualify, qualify that because if you look at this one, this was one year's bloom, second year bloom, and this first year one has a couple little nubbies out it. And sometimes if, you, if those nubbies break off, a year or two later, you might have an iris. Oh my gosh. Incredibly hardy plants. What if hard you to kill. That mother, that mother section? The, these guys will no, take over all the growth. The of. Uh, this yeah. thing, trash, because you've got two nice new healthy growing plants. No reason to keep this stuff. Okay, so. Excuse me, Janice. Yes. Um, can you explain to them what a bloom out is, that when you take off one of those and it's not going to flower? Right. Okay, now, Margaret asked me to explain bloom out, and I've had this happen. And basically, what you have here is the iris is cloning itself. Every new plant is identical to the original plant. Every now and then, an iris will decide, I've had it. <laughs> uh, I had one when I had my trek. Um, I had one wonderful plant. It bloomed the first year, sent out three side shoots. Those three each bloomed, wonderful flowers. All three, no side shoots. I did everything I could think of, put them in a pod, gave them extra water, extra fertilizer. They were gone. So um, that's called a bloom out. It happens. Uh, but there's plenty more iris out there to replace them. <laughs> yeah, and I, even though I love that one flower, I don't think it's worthwhile my trying to buy a new one and plant it and see what happens. Um, also, you'll find <clears throat> iris are hybridized across the country. So Oregon is the, is the epicenter of iris gardens and hybridizers. But there are hybridizers in Utah, um, on uh, Missouri, Missouri, back east, Tennessee. Iris that grow in a different climate may take a while to adapt to ours. I know the ones from Utah, um, whether it's the coming from Utah or it's the hybridizers um, line of iris, they just don't do too well here. And everyone has that experience. Would it possibly be day length, the change in the day length? Um, 
I don't think so. It's probably temperature, more temperature related. Uh, I do know we there is a major hybridizer in Australia. You can order his plants. They come up here from him. When they come up here, though, they've got to figure out what the season is. It takes about two, three years before they figure it out. You're better off buying his flowers from a grower in Oregon. Right. Right. Okay, so I showed you the normal bearded iris growth, the PCI growth. You can sort of see this poor little PCI growth. <coughs> Uh, but you can see its growth up, branching, lots of branches. If this was still alive, I would simply have broken <coughs> off one of these branches and planted it. That's the one you can't let dry out. Right? Correct. Right. This is the one that died <coughs> this year. I'm hoping there's still some of it left. The same with the Louisiana iris. You see the old rhizome. These guys, usually you have to take a knife to be able to break them apart, especially when you've got the thicker ones. It's still um, green. It's still green. Yeah, th this one is cracked. <coughs> oh, okay. Well, it's, I've got lots of it. I just pulled it up out of the pot as they, to show you today. Okay, so of the bearded iris, don't plant them too deep. Okay. When you divide them, or, or good garden care, is pull off all of the dead leaves. And if you have a clump in your yard, it's always advisable to remove the dead leaves. They um, can, if they're sitting there too long, they can harbor a leaf spot fungus. My fungus went away. That is not, show a picture. Um, which won't kill the iris, but it will, if there's too much of it, it will reduce its vigor because basically you have iris fungus growing on the leaf instead of the chlorophyll. Do you want me to pass those out? Sure. A couple of copies. So keep your iris bed clean of leaf litter. Uh, when you divide these guys, usually we cut off the excess leaves. Is that leaf spot fungus on those leaves right there? No. This is damage. Um, or the leaf is oh, dying, dying back. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the leaf spot is spread by generally overhead watering. Um, the or iris I saw up in Oregon were covered with it. But they were growing just fine. Uh, don't overhead water. <laughs> keep the uh, leaves clean. Keep the leaf litter cleaned up. This also harbors um, bugs. So yeah, ap aphids are a problem with iris. And this year, I'm getting more and more white fly, which I don't like. Um, okay, so remove leaves. Watch for fungus, aphids, and leaf spot. Don't water during the day, so you don't want to cook the dyes. And if you plant them too deep, too much water, clay soils, the rhizomes will rot. They really, it's a bacterial rot and they really stink. Um, there's one other thing that happens to iris and no one, bearded iris and no one's quite figured out why. And it's called pineappling. Your rhizome, the leaves will get all scrunchy, distorted. The flowers probably won't bloom real well, won't look good. But whatever environmental effect caused that, the offshoots will be fine. I had, I had that quite a bit two years ago, and everything was fine the second year. Yes? How often do you um, dig up your pumps to divide? Once again, it depends on the vigor of the plant. Okay. So just read it. When there's fewer blooms, it's time to do it. 
when there well when there's fewer blooms also if your rhizome is not real vigorous and it only sends up one or two side shoots you could probably go longer if it's really vigorous like this rebloomer of mine um, it may be every two years. It all depends on the specific cultivar and its characteristics. Okay, I was asked this several times already, why won't my iris bloom? <laughs> you plant too deep in the ground, they'll sit there, look green. If they don't rock, they tend not to bloom. Not getting six hours minimum sunlight, they won't bloom. They'll sit there, be green, but they won't bloom. Uh, not enough fertilizer, fertilizing early spring, and then after bloom, though I, I'm waiting till this hot weather ends to fertilize mine, and getting way too crowded, because they'll just fill in, basically the soil under those things has just been leached of the nutrients. They'll sit there, they'll look green, but they won't do much of anything and blooming takes energy. Do um, you have any other questions on iris not blooming? Or it would be when you're transplanting, how do you prepare the new space for them, which would obviously affect all right. these other things. Right, when I, I have all of my iris in somewhat raised beds, I dug down in my hard fill dirt as far as I could, lined it with wire because I had gopher problems, then filled it all back in with lots of um, planting mix, dirt, whatever dirt I could find. Um, when I dig a whole bed, I just start throwing in new dirt, alfalfa, um, pellets. Meal is better, the pellets, um, there's a funny story about the pellets, since iris love um, alfalfa, a hybridite or a person described digging up iris, putting a big handful of pellets down the bottom, planting the iris. You know what happens when the pellets hydrate? It comes out. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pushed it right on out. So the, most recently I tried uh, alfalfa meal, when I mix in the soil. Gypsum is good. Um, uh, I've tried just about everything to rejuvenate a bed. Because I had, a, pardon? Uh, feed store, alfalfa meal. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is one in Lakeside. There are, several, in Lakeside. Feed sto there are <laughs> several feed stores in Lakeside and Santee that will sell you alfalfa meal. Yes? I, uh, Margaret had given me a big purple one, and mm -hmm. I felt putting uh, stuff I got from Ryder's Garden, it was 5, 45, 10. Mm -hmm. And my clump got about 18 inches around, and I had like 18 stems on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that having that middle value number really, really encourages bloom. What, what's the number again? Oh, MPK, so the phosphorus yeah. really, really, really encourages bloom. Phosphorus. Yeah. Is it not recommended anymore to put a little superphosphate in the soil? Sure. Oh, here. Well, I'll do that when I plant. 60, 20, 0. Right. Superphosphate? Yeah. Yeah. It's the nitrogen. Same thing. Yeah, you want, as far as the fertilizer you use, once again, NPK, have the lowest nitrogen, the first number be the lowest, if possible. So super bloom is great. Rose food is fine. Rogers, Rogers Garden has an iris, uh, liquid iris mix that you mm -hmm. can get there. It's 5, 45, 10. Okay. Oh my God. Can we get it anywhere else besides 10. way up there? I don't know. I, can just, I get to on Rogers on. once yeah. a month. Right. So. Um, our society. I don't remember if it's in the handouts I gave you. We have a. Our website, our club website, has a formula for um, an iris fertilizer that was worked out by one of our members years ago. 
Um, another member more recently has her own special formula that she uses, and I've tried it. Mm -hmm. It all worked just fine, as long as you remember to fertilize. Uh, another question that we get asked are, do iris change color? I planted yellow iris. This year they're blooming white. Oh. Well, really? two, thi <laughs> two things have happened. One, someone sprayed Roundup. Yeah. It won't necessarily kill the iris, but it will distort the bloom the next year. It will come out really sort of kinky white. Thick. I've done it. Um, the other thing is what might be happening is hybridize your iris for you. And this is a, what we call a bee pod, B-E-E -E pod. Um, the flower was fertilized. It's developed a seed pod. The seed pod, when it ripens, can sp spray out up to 40 or so seeds. A year, a two year, Per year, who knows how long it takes in our climate, some of those seeds might germinate. And who, because of the genetics of the iris, you'll end up very likely with totally different color from what you started with. Um, <coughs> the same goes for Spuria iris. This is a Spuria that um, is, was highly fertilized by someone, not me, and the seeds readily germinate by themselves. So if you uh, leave the bloom stalks up on your Spuria, uh, no telling what you're going to get in a few years. There is a procedure to, um, this is a you see a Louisiana iris seed pod, a little bit different shape. And Louisiana seeds are covered with a corky material, they float, and in order to get them to germinate, you have to scrape the cork away so the water gets to them. I'm not suggesting you try hybridizing, I'm just telling you what will happen if you leave the bloom stalks on the flowers um, and, have a, and have a pod. Yes? Do you ever send out something like some plants do sports? Do they ever send a sport off of the mother? Natural mutation. It is a natural mutation. Um, I'd say yes because that's probably how the space agers started. Um, and of course, we're always hoping for a red iris to sport off, but it hasn't happened yet. At what point do you cut down the bloom stalks? Right after it's bloomed. Uh, the only re I've, I've read where someone was having a bloom out and they left the stock on there to provide extra nutrients because it does have the chlorophyll in it to try and get that rhizome to send out more, stock, uh, more side shoots. That's the only reason I've heard of to keep a bloom stock on. When there's multiple flowers on a stock, how do you remove these flowers that are spent? Um, very carefully. The, um, we have a protocol for our show where um, grooming the stock is important, but you would just go in and unfortunately just snap her off. The uh, Louisianas are a little bit harder. All oh, bearded are easy. Uh, pods. Okay. The fact that I have blooms here today means that all of these cultivars are rebloomers. 
they're free from the vernalization spring bloom only. Uh, I have one seedling in my yard that bloomed in April, bloomed in July, bloomed in August, it's blooming right now. Wow. Um, so, generally a rebloomer will bloom at least twice a year, it's criteria. There's some that are termed ever bloomers, that once the rhizome gets big enough that it's ready, it will bloom. And the same mother rhizome. Is it setting off a new little pup that blooms right away, or what? Once that new little pup gets big enough, it will bloom. In the same year? Yes. Uh -huh. Right, so. so like these that I'm showing you today, <clears throat> if I didn't have them all way too crowded, conceivably I could have had this bloom. This one just blooms twice a year. One bloom here in the spring, and a second one bloom sometime in the fall, oh. when it's happy, oh. when it's happy, when it's big enough. Okay. So my question was, does it bloom on the same stalk or no? So uh, obviously it bloms. No, no, it needs no, no. a new pup. It, yes. So there it can be a bloom or blooms on a new pup, not on yes. the same stalk. Okay. So 90, yeah, it's five, a new 90, I'm, I'm going to qualify that because I thought one that did. <laughs> it bloomed once, and then two months later it bloomed again. On the same? Yes. Mother. Oh and evidently, that's why I said 95% of the time, what I'm saying is one rhizome, one bloom is correct. But there's always an exception. <laughs> in house pup. I saw somebody dissect a rhizome and the pup never emerged outside of the rhizome. It was in the core uh -huh. of the mother rhizome. Oh my gosh. So that's you know, I mean, it didn't much. totally come mm -hmm. out, just the tip where the stalk came out. It uh -huh. actually was inside. Hmm. Uh, I'm not going to dissect this one. Yeah, so, but, well, they <laughs> did, and that's what it was, but okay. who knows. Um, it would it eventually come out? Or no, because no, it, it bloomed. Yeah. It's like the two-headed snake. That <laughs> happens every once in a while. Right. <laughs> so, um, This is just a couple more pictures. This is the candy lily. It was just recently added into the uh, iris oh, yeah. oh, genus. SDBs from the chart you see here bloom early, bloom first, on up through the tall beardeds. Then you have the rebloomers, you have the Japanese iris. They all bloom at different times of the year. So depending on what you choose, you could conceivably have iris year-round. Um, and this is just to, this is, I don't know how many people might have this laying around in their yard. This is, I think, iris albicans, a species iris that was planted on graves throughout the uh, Arabian Middle East on Muslim graves. And it had wide, wide spreading. I don't know how it ended up in my mother's yard in North Park, but it's followed me ever since. And it is very, 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 very drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of it off on the side of the yard, never watered it. And it was perfectly happy. It only has about two little flowers and a stalk, and it blooms early. Albicans, is it? Albicans, I think. I think. It, how did you find the history of it? Did you know right Oops. away it was different? Oops. That's why I'm saying I'm qualifying it, I think, because <laughs> when you start looking at all the pictures uh -huh. of what this is, then you notice. everyone has a little bit different picture. Yeah. But it basically it meets the descriptive of that species. In Louisiana, uh -huh. uh, I think you have a plastic there around there, uh, and then you put in your fertilizer. Do you have a hole yeah. in the bottom? Okay. Use wire. All right. In the case of these pots, this is how I I keep Louisiana going because I don't want to go out and water them every day. 
So I basically created a small swamp in the pot <laughs> by putting a little plastic uh, bag in the pot, filling it with dirt, and plopping in the rhizome. Um, in, in when you take these home, I would highly recommend, they'll keep them in these pots, is get another pot, acidic soil of some sort, and just plop this on over into the pot mm -hmm. with or without a drain hole, it's up to you. Without the drain hole, your soil will smell like a swamp. Um, with the drain hole, just remember to water it once a week. Okay. Okay, and so in a pond, uh, what I've been, what you do is put this in a pot with some soil, some rocks on top, keep it from floating out, and plant it so that the, notice the hard way, plant it so that the green part of the rhizome is right at the surface of the water. Otherwise, the plant wants to get that out of the water and it'll start elongating up. Another question? Okay, and then here. Um, on the fertilizer, you started off by saying avoid bone meal. But yeah, That's for Japanese. Oh, oh. Yes. Okay. So for the common irises that you'll see in San Diego that we would get specific questions about, can you name what some of the most common ones are? And, and I'm assuming that they fall under the bearded instructions that you gave about six hours of sun and minimal sun, uh, summer water and such? Okay the, okay, the bearded iris, that's what most everyone has here in San Diego. The six hours of sun is a requirement. The watering, um, with the rebloomers, if you don't water in the summer, they'll go dormant, which all the iris do otherwise, and they won't necessarily rebloom for you. So if you have a rebloomer and you want to keep it actively growing, you'll need to water it during the summer. All of these I give water year-round out in Lakeside because it's 100 plus too many times a week. So I never really let mine go totally dry. Okay. And regular fertilizer, uh, low in nitrogen. Um, and I'm sorry, what are some of the um, most common varieties here in San Diego, would you say? Uh, the cultivars, uh, what, what, whatever, pardon? The common names that people call us with. My, 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 my iris, my bearded iris, iris, uh, right, right now Home Depot sells bags, oh, that's something to tell you. Right now Home Depot sells bags of iris that are probably coming, uh, probably coming from a uh, big, big grower up in Oregon. No telling how long they've been in those plastic bags, but the recommendation is when you first receive one of these guys in the mail, if you order them, is soak it overnight in a bucket of water with the rhizome in the water just to get it hydrated again. These roots, that are out and drying will never rehydrate. They're basically there to anchor the plant. What it will do though is send out brand new roots out of the rhizome. Okay, so the old roots are history. So should we, we cut them off? Should we cut them off? Should we cut those off or just leave them there for anchor? Just just leave them as an anchor. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> but these roots will not re rehydrate, regrow. The rhizome will send out new roots. Okay. Um, avoid packaged rhizomes. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're all wrinkled up and they look come, like crap. Well, yeah, come to the, once again, these things come to our sale this weekend. Okay, we're we're digging Thursday and cleaning Thursday for sale on Sunday. Any of those rhizomes that you buy, the recommendation, once again, put them in a container of water with just the rhizome part, not the whole plant is dumped in. Overnight, then 
I would recommend sticking it in a pot just to get it started again, get the roots growing, then put it out in your yard. And it should be somewhere in our, our recommendations here from our society. Some people, the question was, do you, should you use mulch? Um, with the Louisiana iris, I've seen it, <clears throat> seen it described that they put pine needles over the top to protect, give the rhizome a little bit of sun protection from sunburn but without allowing, that will allow super drainage and not sit there and rot on top of the rhizome. Um, these guys, generally you're supposed to give them a little bit of sun. Another question? Yes. On your sale, are you going to be redeeming the second weekend? Yes. New? Or the, the second week, um, of our sale, those rhizomes that still look good, we continue to offer, but the second week members dig their own yards and bring those rhizomes to the second sale. So there will be fresh rhizomes. They're different than the first week. Right. Yeah, the first week uh, we'll be digging a yard in Ramona. Uh, she has over 600 Whoa. iris in her yard. And it's whichever ones need dividing this year, we're going to dig we'll have clumps like that, break apart, clean. We have to get all the dirt off for the sale. Uh, trim, clean, label, um, and then they'll be ready to go. As far oh, as far as labeling goes, for the purpose of iris, if you want to keep track of the name? I can tell you through experience, don't use a Sharpie. It will sun fade. Sun fade. Um, pencil on the labels does work, but it has faded too. Um, used to be able to buy these pens at um, Michael's, not anymore. Mail order them, deco color, they're very stable. They actually brought them back to Michael's. Yeah. Deco color? Deco, Deco color, yeah, because they were selling Sharpie paint and pens, and I, I did an experiment, you know, my background. <laughs> and I went out, put up a, a label with the Deco color, with the, with the Sharpie paint, and six months later, not even six months, the Sharpie paint was faded out. And this is the label tags I use that since I have mostly tall bearded, this sort of gets, at least you can find them when the plants are real happy. Um, anything else? If not, I thank you very much. Thank you.